Hi guys, thanks for checking out this video. I keep posting pictures and uh, talking about my LS Swap IS200 project, but I haven't actually uh, posted any recorded content yet, and I'm gonna start now. Um, let me show you what I've done. So this is the LS6 block. Uh, to go in the IS300 or even other platforms, anything where the cross members in the way, you need a front sump pan. This is a pan off of a GTO, uh, like 2004, 2006-ish, it's the front sump. Um, but even even this uh, situation, I still either ha I have to notch out the pan or cut the subframe a little bit, and I think I'm leaning towards modifying the subframe. That way, I won't take away of the uh, the capacity that the oil pan actually holds. I'd rather modify the subframe instead or the cross member. Um, so yeah, I've got the rotating assembly put together. I got a whole new set of uh, main and rod bearings. I went with King King race bearings. Uh, I went with Mall uh, piston rings. I gapped them out. I just looked up a good gap for running nitrous. I do want to run nitrous on this motor. I believe they're at like somewhere around 25,000-ish. Um, yeah, I did a Chevy orange paint job. Um, the pan is basically on there just to keep debris out of it. I tape it up the top, same reason, keep the debris out. But today, um, I got some stuff to clean up. I need to clean up the timing cover. I need to clean up the valley cover or the valley plate. And after that, I can, um, throw the cam in there I got a new oil pump for it a new timing chain I can uh, once this is all cleaned up I can assemble all that get the cover on there and then from there we can start installing accessories you know I can get the crank pulley on their water pump all that stuff is on the way should be here tomorrow but for now let's at least um, start cleaning some stuff up so I was trying to think of like some uh, helpful information I can give you guys on installing this stuff um, I'm gonna start off with this with this timing cover a lot of people think you could just slap it on and tighten it down But it's actually pretty important that it's centered on the snout of the crankshaft because if not you'll get um, this the snout Will actually sit off of center because these bolt holes are actually pretty big the plate Sorry about that. It can actually shift around so it's a good idea to go ahead and slip the cover on uh Get the crankshaft pulley on there or the uh, harmonic balancer, get it on there and that way the seal will somewhat self-center on the crankshaft pulley and then you tighten down the cover all the way. You torque down the cover with the pulley on there if that makes sense. Otherwise, you're going to tighten it down. It could be you know one way or the other, left or right and then when you shove that crank pulley on there, it might be a little bit off center. And that's what, I, what happened with this one, I could tell. Let's, let's take a look here. There's more meat on the left side of the seal than on the right side because the the timing cover was just a little bit to the left it's like a millimeter but i'm just gonna try to avoid that it's just it's a good idea to avoid leaks and stuff like that um this seal is a little dry but i do have a new one i have a new seal to, to uh, go in here so i need to pop that guy out where is it at oh here it is on my big table of giant mess here's a new seal and put that in a good spot. Well, that's about as good as I can get it with the Barsol uh, parts cleaner. I know it can be cleaner than that. It's just got years of crud and oil and sludge caked onto it. Uh, I want to see how good I can get it to clean. I want it to have like a, a clean raw aluminum finish like the oil pan. Um, only the block is going to be painted. I don't want to paint the timing cover or anything else. So I just want it to be as clean as I can get it. What I'm going to do is hit it with the wire brush and see how it turns out after that. Nobody knows With the wire wheel, it, didn't, it still didn't come out quite right. So what I did is I just grabbed some uh, 180 sandpaper and just kind of went over the whole thing and it brought out a lot of the shine because uh, with the wire wheel, it wasn't very shiny at all. Which, I mean, this it doesn't have to be fucking perfect. I'm just being uh, you know, a little picky. I'm 
kind of proud of this build. I want it to look clean and you know presentable and shit like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be good enough. It's definitely a lot better than what it was. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and install the pump. The, the cam plate, I had to get a new cam plate. I got a sprocket and the chain. I can get all the, the timing situated. And then I can put the seal in here. And the timing cover gasket is actually at home, but that's not a big deal because I still need the crank pulley. Um, so like I said, I'm not gonna tighten down or torque down the timing cover until I have that crank pulley going through it. So it kind of aligns that seal and centers it up nice and straight hopefully prevents any uh, oil leaks from getting by and of course it's always a good idea to lube your cam before you install it Ooh, this is coming out a lot faster than I thought it was uh, um, I think it's more important to get the the journals what right along the bearings you know which is gonna be one two three four five um, the rest of them you can get, you know, through the lifter bores and come back and oil them later. Make sure those journals where it rides on the bearings are nice and lubed. Um, since I'm a cheap bastard, I'm just throwing in this um, LM7 cam. Uh, once I get it, like, running and all the bugs worked out, I'm going to go ahead and do an aftermarket cam, upgrade the valve train, and just, um, you know, go through it and start doing upgrades. But I want to focus my money and resources into just getting this thing in the car and running. Um, I don't want to spend money in places I don't really need to, um, if that makes sense. You know, I just want to spend my money right now on getting the car running. That, that's it. That's what I want to focus on. So let's go ahead and get this cam in there. in there I'm gonna kind of get ready to do the oil pump timing chain and sprocket um, but first of all let me show you that there's pretty much two kinds of uh, sprockets there's a three bolt and a single bolt this is your typical three bolt uh, this is probably the most common maybe it's on the older like gen threes uh, you know all the way from 97 the first LS1 used three bolt up to like 2006 and then the 2007 the new body style trucks are going to single bolt uh, as well as the LS3, uh, LS3 is single bolts, LS7 is a three bolt, um, LS2 is also a single bolt. So I don't, the newer generation LSs seem to use more single bolt setups, but when you go aftermarket, uh, most of the aftermarket are actually three bolt cams. So you have to buy a three bolt camshaft, um, you know, like this LM7 of course is a, is a three bolt camshaft, but like this LS3, shaft I have here single bolt so sometimes you got to do a conversion to get an aftermarket cam to work but where was I okay I'm gonna install the oil pump that's where I'm at all right first thing I'm gonna do is hang my chain because you cannot take the chain off once the oil pump is installed and I'm just gonna kind of set the pump in place. I will eventually need to take that bolt out. It's gonna be a way of, uh, going to be in the way of installing the timing cover with the seal. I'm not sure if it'll fit, but I just had it on there to kind of rotate it and make sure everything felt nice and good. And you gotta rotate it. It only goes on a certain way. Yep, motor spins over good. No uh, binding. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. That's just my personal opinion. I've done four pumps now that way and I've had no issues with oil pressure or anything like that. The only thing I have had an issue with is if you use the incorrect O-ring here for the pickup tube, that is what will give you issues. That little sucker has to be fucking perfect or you won't have good oil pressure. Learned that the hard way, how to come back and uh, get the correct O-ring for that. 
But um, yeah, now I can go ahead and get my new cam plates. I uh, got this from ICT Billet. A lot of my stuff is coming from ICT Billet on Amazon. Uh, this little guy was like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. But they have really good LS uh, products, like hardware, bolts, uh, brackets, you know, cam plates, everything you need, ICT basically makes. It's a pretty cool company. So this little guy goes here. And of course it comes with a new gasket. Um, when you reuse them, you'll notice that they get flat. But this is, this is nice and fresh. It's, uh, it's still raised. There's plenty of life left. You can get away with reusing these a couple times. Um, and of course I have new hardware. Let me go get that. Should be a T40 Torx, but I'll come back and verify that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is kind of hard with one hand. There we go. And the fourth and final one. It's a good idea to actually put a little bit of Loctite on these guys. Just a, just a dab will do ya. Because this is pretty important. This is basically your cam. Uh, it's like a thrust plate. You know, it keeps the, the thrust from happening. And you don't want none of that. So that would be bad. So let me go ahead and drop some Loctite. All right, got the uh, thrust plate on there. Between the three and the single bolt cams, what stays the same is the location of top dead center. Um, this dowel pin is always at three o'clock. It's always on this side. And that'll put the dot on the sprocket uh, going to the crank where you want it. So, let's get this guy on here. Just like that. See the dot, it's going to be facing 6 o'clock and the dot on the crank should be 12 o'clock. So let me go ahead and rotate the crank over and get that sucker at top dead center. So one more piece of information before I leave. So the cams that are 3 bolt for the factory, those have the uh, reluctor wheel on the back of the camshaft. And I think it's this guy here. Uh, let me turn my light. You can actually see the back of the camshaft. There's a little reluctor wheel on the back and that's what triggers the cam sensor. But on the on the single bolt cams, that's whenever you see the cam sensor actually uh, in the timing cover. Um, you can convert it. You can extend the harness from the rear, extend it over to the front and get an LS3 timing cover. Of course, you need the sensor too. That is possible. I've done that before. It wasn't you know too much of a pain. I just got three wires and extended myself. But they actually sell like plug and play uh, harnesses to make it easier. So yeah, just one more piece of information for you. Uh, that's it for this video. It is time to go home. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.